watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraphs, cherubim and thrones, praise the glad strain, Alleluia! Cry out, O minions, princedoms, powers, virtues, archangels, angels, choirs, Alleluia! Alleluia! Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Today, I am putting before us the Enriching Our Worship Confession. The language is a little different. It reflects the corporate nature of our life, the community, and that God works through individuals and the community, and we are a whole witness in this world. And so let us humbly offer to God our confession of our sin. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, we and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our, the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. 
if I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm is spoken in unison. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of this household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the world. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. 
Do, uh, so have no fear of them. Do not fear those. And so do not be afraid. Jesus, in this set of instructions in the Gospel of Matthew, as he's commissioning disciples and preparing them to go to be his presence in the world and to follow in the way that he has shown them to heal and to lift, uh, lift, raise the dead and to give sight to the blind, says to them three times in this conversation, don't be afraid, don't fear those, and do not fear. Now, generally, I might have begun wondering, what am I getting into here? I mean, listen, guy, I'm, I'm with you, but three times? Hmm, okay. But what I find fascinating in this text is how it, Jesus finishes. He says, those, the one who does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. The invitation in the text, in the witness of Jesus, in, of Matthew to the followers in the first century was, we take up the cross. We suffer. There will be suffering. They will come at you because they don't believe you. They will come at you because you follow somebody who was put to death on a cross by the empire. They will come at you because you have, you're disquieting the comfortable way that they live, trying to keep the order, and you're going to come in there and turn it upside down and shake it a few times and pull it apart. But the invitation isn't to go in and destroy. The invitation is to be Jesus' presence in the world. And that's going to disturb the empire. That's going to disturb the comfortability that might not be paying attention to how others are being extorted, uh, used, treated like economic chaff. It's not going to challenge redlining in neighborhoods. It's not going to challenge uh, pr racial profiling. It's not going to challenge racist uh, discrimination in, in the job place or excluding the LGBT community. It's not going to challenge how women can be treated like sexual objects by executives and somehow skate by on it. It's go <laughs> the empire won't challenge that because the empire draws its life out of drawing life out of others instead of giving life. Jesus says, go and heal. Go and raise up. That's giving life. That's letting the love of God, the powerful spirit of God, flow through us and transform the world around us. It's not us doing it, <laughs> it's God's love doing it. It's our cooperation with God's love that gives us the capacity to see things in ways we've never imagined before. And we are in that kind of moment. We're being invited by the Spirit to see our world in a way we've never seen it before. It's exciting and it's terrifying. Do not be afraid. Go raise the dead. Do not be afraid of those who will oppose you. That's taking up the cross. That's standing between those who may not believe yet but are sorely oppressed, but those of us who believe know this is the wrong. It is putting hope into action. Because as I've said before, hope has two daughters, anger and courage. We know this to be wrong, and we're going to work to change it. And... In our case, in this racial period, race is all over the world. It's a beautiful gift. And some of us are in a position to help stop the empire from oppressing those who have less ability. And we suffer not for our own sake, but for being the love of God. There's no space. I mean, I hear things in the media and people I talk to and, well, I've been put on too. No, 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 Jesus isn't saying that. Jesus is saying you're going to suffer for doing the right, for being the good. I'm even going to take the word right out. I shouldn't have said that one. For being the good and the action of love and the presence of hope. And that's going to start with listening, with hearing the story 
of other people, brothers and sisters, the he, the she, the they who are in our community, who have something to share because sharing their story is the most intimate act a person can do with us. It opens us, like a tabernacle, to have that precious gift of life put in reserve with us. And we cherish it. And then we do this funny thing. We turn around and we share our story. And next thing, this is my brother. This is my sister. I would, they, I would protect them with my whole life. I will suffer crucifixion. I will bear that cross. So that the empire has no more say. As will there be evil? Well, there'll be evil. Jesus didn't say we'd get rid of it, but he did not say, don't bother. We are invited, compelled. We are the children of God to walk in this world and bear the transformative grace to end social isolation, racial profiling, economic injustice. Some of us are doing it. I can well imagine some of us doing it in the right, in the right, doing the right thing in a certain job and you lose the job because of it. That's why we have a community. We really get back to acts. I'll save that for another moment. But the invitation here is to take up our cross, to stand against the empire, and to walk with those who are just trying to be heard, like Jesus did, and treasure the stories we receive, and begin to understand our own story so that we can live in an empathic relationship and build this peaceful reign of God where hope abounds. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God, you are beyond our knowing, yet you love us completely and show us the way to love without limits. We praise your name. For this earth in its beauty, we praise your name. 
for the wisdom and commitment of leaders. We praise your name. For those with birthdays, Dale, Jerry, Susan, Carl, Randy, Michelle, and Sean, we praise your name. For those with anniversaries, Eric and Kari, and Randy and Nancy, we praise your name. You are the source of solace in every need. For those who are sick or injured, Mark, Mary, Sheena, Fritz, Jim, Jan, Sienna, Matthew, Mitch, John, Daryl, Doug, Diane, Ann, Susie, Chris, Michelle, Madri, and David, and for those in continued care. Lord, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of all who suffer, especially for those throughout the world without access to health care, sanitation, or the ability to quarantine. Give peace and understanding between all people and all races. Lead us to love all as you love all. Lord, hear our prayer. Give peace to the world for peace in our cities and the end of racial injustice. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Give your grace to all we name before you. Hear our prayer. Compassionate and merciful, ever-present God, hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Walk with us as we follow in Jesus' way to bring hope and life and love to the world. We ask this in his name, humbly in unity with the Holy Spirit, with you, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As we continue, uh, word, just please be paying attention. We are looking at how we might regather as community. Uh, much has to be done. We're still not quite there in terms of safety uh, and numbers of COVID, but our mission continues. So do please remember uh, to send your pledge or contributions in uh, to support the work we do here and the work we do in the community. Thank you. And now in the words that Jesus has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray God's blessing. In this Pentecost moment, when the Spirit stirs the whole world and invites us to see with God's eyes, to imagine with God's vision, and to move with God's grace, may you go into this world offering hope, being love, and working for the transformation of all God's children. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy, be there at our waking and give us sweet in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your 
strength in our words, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing, and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping, and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.